do you consider this bill a bill that is sympathizing with terrorists? Representative Nixon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I consider this a bill, a resolution that wants folks to humanize the lives that are being lost, the innocent lives that are being lost as it relates to Israelis and Palestinians. So that was Democratic Florida State Representative Angie Nixon pleading with her peers in the Florida State Legislature this week in the Florida House to pass a resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. Nixon introduced that resolution by condemning Hamas and calling for all Israeli hostages to be freed. She made it abundantly clear that all she was asking for in this resolution was for the Florida State House to call for Palestinian civilian lives to be valued in addition to Israeli lives. And this is the reaction she got. There is evil in this room and we can fight them here today. If you vote for this, you're an anti-Semite. Representative Nixon's colleagues asked her how she could really know that 10,000 people had been killed in Gaza. They implied that most, if not all of those 10,000 dead were terrorists and they made provably false claims like this one. Three weeks ago, we were told, oh my God, if you don't let the humanitarian aid in, if you don't let the fuel in, the hospitals will be shut down. Everyone will die. It's three weeks later. They're all still open. When Representative Nixon asked how many dead Palestinians would be enough, one of her colleagues, a Republican Florida State Representative, Michelle Salzman, yelled out all of them. We are at 10,000 dead Palestinians. How many will be enough? I also, one of my colleagues just said all of them. Wow. One of my colleagues said all of them. And now that representative, Salzman, has apologized, clarifying that she meant all of them being all of Hamas. Salzman also says that since that clip went viral, she has received death threats for it. Discussions about how the United States should react to what is happening inside Gaza are incredibly fraught all across the country. But it is a vital conversation, and so we must have it. Joining us now is Democratic Florida State Representative Angie Nixon. Representative Nixon, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Uh, first, I, I just... Tell me how you were feeling in that moment. How frustrated are you by the debate that is taking place uh, and how reductive it is? Yeah, so I was, <laughs> even just listening to that, um, I feel as though I'm having some post-traumatic stress because it was absolutely ridiculous, the fact that many of my colleagues refused to see the humanity in the Palestinians that were losing their lives over, over in Gaza. And the fact that in the Florida legislature, the only reason we called a special session in regards to uh, having resolutions to address what was happening in the Middle East is because our governor is absent and he wanted to score cheap political points because he was taking part in a Republican debate uh, that next day. It's upsetting that instead of focusing on issues like the affordability crisis in, in Florida and the fact that uh, Folks can no longer afford Florida. There's a 9,000 educator shortage. Instead of focusing on that, and the, also the fact that they're ki kicking off 500,000 Floridians off Medicaid, instead of addressing those issues, mm. they, they, they decided to address this to gain cheap political points. I'm curious to get your thoughts about how this debate is framed. As I mentioned, you condemned what Hamas did, you called for the hostages to be released, and you called for a ceasefire. What do you say to the people who say that by calling for a ceasefire, you are supporting Hamas? That is now how the conversation in this country has been framed. We even heard the former Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, say those who call for a ceasefire don't understand Hamas. Look, at the end of the day, regardless of what 
religion you practice or your ethnicity or your race. Everyone deserves the freedom to live healthy. Everyone deserves the freedom to live safely. And everyone deserves to, to live in peace with their families. And that goes for Israelis as well as uh, Palestinians. What type of moral compass do we have when we are okay with thousands upon thousands of people, particularly babies, not even able to blow their first birthday candle out when because they're dying. Atrocities should not be met with more atrocities. And I was simply trying to humanize, humanize what was going on to the Palestinians over in Gaza. What Hamas did was wrong. They are terrorists that need to be brought to justice, period. But we cannot discount the fact that there are innocent Palestinians that are dying and the fact that many of my Republican colleagues call them terrorists. It mm. is absurd. It is um, only going to embolden um, more hateful rhetoric and also violence in our country. Look. I had on, on in August 26, I had a white ra racist domestic terrorist come and slaughter three black people in my district. And a, that had a lot to do with the hateful rhetoric that Governor Ron DeSantis and many within the Republican Party in Florida, ha that had a lot to do with the hateful and anti-black policies and anti-black rhetoric that they pushed. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go to do anti-Palestinian rhetoric, I'm fearful of the Palestinian Americans that live in our state. It has to stop. We need to call for a ceasefire and immediate de-escalation, the release of hostages, all of it. Right. But we cannot discount these lives that are being lost. Uh, Representative uh, Nixon, can I ask you quickly why the disconnect then? I mean, there was a Data for Progress poll from last, uh, late last month that showed 66 percent of voters in the United States support calling for a ceasefire, but that only 18 members of Congress at the federal level have actually signed on to a resolution to actually call for a ceasefire. Why do you think there is such a big disconnect between elected officials in this country and what the American public want? I... I... <laughs> I cannot really speak to that. I can only speak to the fact that <laughs> I care about the people and and the community. And I, I don't know if it is special interest groups and big corporations, maybe it's that that's playing into this issue. But but look, it I was elected by the people and it does not make sense for me to be in office if I'm only saying things when it's politically expedient for me, or I'm only saying things to make sure that I'm reelected. If, if I'm not speaking out against atrocities, if I'm not speaking out for the voiceless, I shouldn't be in office, period. We should make sure that all who live in this country, and, and if, you're, if you're also um, in Congress, if we're talking about foreign affairs, everyone in the world deserves to live healthy, prosperous, and safe, period, despite who we love, who, what religion mm -hmm. we, we practice. And, you know, the people in our country want to see uh, Palestinians and Israelis uh, living peacefully. And so we should definitely, as elected officials, use our voices to call for a de-escalation and an immediate solution to address those concerns. Democratic Florida State Representative Angie Nixon, greatly appreciate your time uh, and your insights this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you.